If someone tells you that eating a certain food is going to modulate inflammation, they're probably not really looking at the whole picture. There are definitely anti-inflammatory foods, like don't get me wrong, but when you're looking at inflammation as a whole and like what's happening, especially as we start to get older, it's not like going and eating some beets is going to fix everything. Yes, a dietary overhaul could certainly change things, absolutely, but anti-inflammatory foods, eh, they're not working on the inflammatory pathway that people might kind of lead you to believe. That being said, there are foods that are more inflammatory than foods that are anti-inflammatory. So you can eat bad foods that can increase inflammation. But I want to talk about ways that are really proven to modulate inflammation as we get older. Because as we get older, what ends up happening is a level of stress in our body and chronic exposure to life leads to damage of our mitochondria, uh, DNA damage, and a number of other things that trigger sort of an immune response. So think of it like this. You have a lifetime of being exposed to different things. You've been exposed to stress. You've been exposed to hard workouts. You've been through the ringer as you get older, and it just stacks up and builds and builds and builds. And a level of mitochondrial stress from poor diet, from lack of exercise and whatnot, leads to sort of the membrane, the outside of the mitochondria, of a cell or an organelle, and it causes it to kind of break down. And when those pieces break off and break down, they go into the bloodstream, and they're called damage-associated molecular patterns. Ultimately, the name's not important. They're just little chunks that the body then has to defend against because it recognizes these particles, but it doesn't really know what they are. They know they're particles of a living thing, of like a mitochondria or a cell, so the body upregulates its immune response and thus leading to inflammation. Now, when you're older, it's called inflammaging because it's a cheesy way of combining two words, inflammation and aging. Now, we have to talk about how we can sort of reduce this, so let's jump right in first and foremost. The best way that you can reduce this from happening is by causing mitochondrial stress. Doesn't make any sense. Didn't I just say that mitochondrial stress in the first place is like what caused this problem? Well, there's this thing called the hormetic curve, okay? And let's just pretend for a second that you're 80 years old. If you're 80 years old and I told you to do like a Norwegian four by four interval set where you're just doing crazy balls to the wall intervals for three to four minutes, with a little recovery, like that's going to probably push you over the edge. Most 80 year olds would be pushed over the edge. Okay. But if I asked you to do that when you're 20, you would feel like you got a pretty darn good workout and you actually would get stronger mitochondria as a result. So when we look at the root of what causes inflammation as we get older, why we get sick, why we potentially get cancers, why we have uh, accelerated aging, poor skin, achy joints, prevalence of getting sick all the time, that is the real inflammation, the real culprit. If our mitochondria is strong, we do actually prevent that from happening a little bit. So it's again, the accumulation of life building up on us, leading to oxidative stress, telomere shortening, DNA damage, all these things that we hear about, but we don't really know what they are. So the first thing that you can do, and hear me out on this, because I know it's cheeky, but it's gonna be either caloric restriction or fasting. When you are already at a decent age where you have a higher level of inflammation, one of the best things you can do is decrease your caloric intake. And if decreasing your caloric intake is hard, I recommend just doing time-restricted feeding because it's an easy way to restrict calories by chunking it, right? I'm gonna go X amount of hours without eating and then X hours of eating. Don't have to like adopt to this perfect fasting lifestyle. You can just occasionally take long periods of time without eating. What this is going to do is it's going to increase autophagy specifically in the mitochondria. So when that happens, you have the mitochondria that have become damaged and you have a damaged membrane. Well, mitophagy through caloric restriction is going to take those damaged parts of the membrane and it's going to eat them, gobble them up, and then help that mitochondria become stronger. It's using decrepit components of itself to eat them and grow stronger components, leading to less dysfunctional mitochondria. Because now you don't have the particles floating into the bloodstream. Remember those particles I talked about on the membrane? 
Well, those are gone now. There's no more issue. You've self-destructed that or you've consumed that mitochondria, so it's not going to cause a further issue. There's one chunk of inflammation already removed really quick. It's one of the fastest ways that you can potentially modulate this. Now, I'll caveat that with you need to make sure you're eating enough protein, okay? Because what can end up happening is when you are going through these periods and you already have stress, you have a good degree of tissue damage that occurs already. So you need to make sure you're eating enough protein when you do eat. The next one is short cold exposure. Okay, cold exposure is hugely important for recovery. It definitely works. As far as a hormetic stress, I really think people take it too far. If you're younger, go for two, three, four, five minutes. You can push it, but you have to listen to your body. Get in the cold plunge or get in a cold shower and go to the point where you can feel like it's hard, but not to where you're miserable. You shouldn't be making yourself miserable. When you get in a cold plunge, it should be difficult, but when you start getting to the point where you're like, uh, like really shivering, you're pushing it too far. Now, as you get older, you need to modulate it even more. I tell people if they're 50 plus, one to two minutes is all you need for the mitochondrial stress. So just like the mitophagy makes the mitochondria stronger because it eats the old components, periodic stress makes the mitochondria resilient. Now, the other way that you go about this is modulating your gut microbiome. Huge, huge thing. There's a study that looked at this and was looking at like sort of lifelong contributors. Like lifelong contributors to inflammation are senescent cells, which we didn't really talk about in this video, the damage associated molecular patterns, like the breakdown of the mitochondria and the DNA damage, telomere shortening. You've heard about telomeres and that comes from just oxidative stress, uh, all kinds of metabolic issues. And then the big one was actually dysbiosis. Our gut leaks the most inflammatory particles. In most cases, healthy people, the gut is probably the biggest cesspool of inflammatory particles. So whenever our gut is damaged, we run into issues. And I tell people, the microbiome is important, but focus more on your gut barrier integrity. So things like bone broth, things like collagen protein, things that help support that gut layer. Staying away from polysorbate 20, polysorbate 60, and polysorbate 80, which are emulsifiers. Look for those three things in food because they will break down that gut integrity. And when the gut barrier breaks down and becomes more permeable, particles come in from the gut into the bloodstream and that triggers an immune attack which increases inflammation just like when the mitochondria are breaking down and you get those little pieces right secondary to that is dysbiosis like as far as the microbiome that is where having fiber prebiotic fiber and probiotic foods and fermented foods come in when you look at the studies that look at cultures that live for a long time like the Scandinavians, which have some of the longest life expectancy. Forget the blue zones for a minute. Scandinavians live a very long time. Three out of seven Scandinavian countries have the long, are on the list of the longest life expectancy. And they eat fermented foods. So do the Okinawans. And then so do a lot of these other blue zones. So the gut microbiome, huge. Now, probiotics I do think are important. I think a lot of them are chamois, to be honest. I put a link down below for the literal only one that I'd recommend. It's called Seed. It's a cool product. It's got a prebiotic and a probiotic in one. So capsule inside of a capsule. I highly recommend that one. So if you're making a shift to your diet, you're trying to add a probiotic in, that's going to be the one. And that link down below is a 25% off discount link. So it's a hefty discount too. They've been a sponsor on this channel for like four years now. So very good product, very good stuff. It's the only one that I legitimately stand behind when it comes to probiotic and prebiotic combined. So that link is in the top line of the description underneath this video and a big thank you to them. So check them out after this video. The next one is one that people don't always like to hear, but when you hear how much of it you have to do, it's a little bit of a godsend. Okay, that's gonna be vigorous exercise. Low, steady, slow cardio, that has benefits, namely like cardiovascular benefits. But when you look at the higher intensity exercise, that's where the real benefits come in. Not only cardiovascularly, not only mentally, not only from a longevity perspective, but as a mitochondrial stressor, okay? Your mitochondria needs to be exposed to little bits of high intensity. It's also easier on the joints. So if you're older, whether or not you're older, preserve your joints. And if you're older, definitely preserve them. Doing things like an elliptical or a bike for 60 to 120 second sprints, followed by however much recovery you need, that is the sweet sauce. That is what you want when it comes down to mitochondrial stress. It's enough stress in the mitochondria that you trigger that stress and then it builds and gets stronger. 
versus I'm going to go to the gym for three hours, increase my cortisol levels, and increase inflammation even more. The nice thing is it's a lesser commitment. And as you're younger, sure, you can do a little bit more. That makes sense. But as you get older, minimum effective dose. Important words, minimum effective dose. Next is going to be heat exposure. I was just sitting down with Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who's kind of like the queen of sauna stuff. And we were talking about how cool the newer literature is that's coming out that's showing that like immersion up to the chest or neck in just a hot tub has similar benefits to sitting in a sauna. People are saying, I, don't, I can't afford a sauna. This thing's like three, four grand, they're expensive. Even an infrared sauna blanket's a thousand bucks. Like, what are you gonna do? But you can sit in a hot bath or a lot of people have a hot tub at their house. Or how many people do you know that are trying to get rid of a hot tub? Like if you can get a cheap hot tub. I know it's a little maintenance cost, but when you see the benefits of sitting in a hot, hot tub for 15 or 20 minutes and making it so that you're activating those heat shock proteins, which chaperone and make mitochondria stronger, it's worth every penny and it's worth your time and you get to have some fun in a hot tub. So it's a win-win, right? So those kind of things are really, really, really important. The other thing that you can add in, there's some interesting evidence behind it, is eating pomegranates or consuming something called urolithin A in a supplement form. And although I do talk about urolithin A in other videos with a sponsor for urolithin A, they're not a sponsor on this video. I'm not trying to sell you urolithin A. But the literature suggests that pomegranates, or again, the active component, urolithin A, that you can get in a different form, actually triggers mitophagy and causes that mitochondria again to recycle. So this is a very potent thing. So adding that in just in little bits here and there along with fasting slash caloric restriction, along with cold exposure, along with vigorous exercise, along with sauna exposure, these kinds of things are what you need to be aiming for for the long-term reduction in inflammation. So as always, keep it locked here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.